there has been a shift in the way that people argue over different ideas, the way we think, the way we reason. It's not the same. Specifically, I've noticed that many of us have moved from first order evidence to higher order evidence. If you don't know what that is, you ought to know what it is and why it matters, especially when it comes to the dialogue we have about religious truth. So stick around because that's what this video is all about. In order to understand higher order evidence, it helps to understand what makes evidence valid. Evidence is valid if it properly connects a belief with reality. In other words, evidence is valid if it rightfully makes a belief true. For instance, I might say that there is a tree in front of me. That's my belief. My evidence for this belief is that I see the tree. And so, given that my sight helps connect me to reality, my evidence for my belief is valid in that tree. You might say that my evidence has a relevant dependence relationship with the reality of this tree if you want to sound smart about it. But uh, if I said that there is a tree in front of me because Lucy knows Spanish, you'd say that evidence is not valid. Why? Because Lucy's knowledge of Spanish does nothing to connect my belief in the tree with the reality of whether or not there's actually a tree there. Now, the kind of evidence I've been talking about so far is what philosophers might call first order evidence. First order evidence is evidence that directly relates to the issue at hand. But as I said earlier, I find that many people have moved from first order evidence to higher order evidence. So what's higher order evidence? Well, if you go to the online Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, they have an excellent article on higher order evidence. It says this, higher order evidence is evidence which bears on a believer's rational capabilities, epistemic performance, or evidential situation. Basically, higher order evidence is evidence about our ability to properly understand first order evidence. Higher order evidence does not directly relate to the issue, but instead it is related to our ability to properly think about the issue. So let's say I suffer from frequent hallucinations. I say that there's a tree in front of me because I see it. And so I find myself doubtful about my first order evidence because I have higher order evidence that I can't trust what I see. Seems reasonable. The problem is that, as I mentioned earlier, so many people are shifting from first order evidence to higher order evidence, especially when discussing matters of religion. They aren't just adding higher order evidence, but they're shifting to it. And so rather than thinking through the first order stuff, we go straight to the higher order stuff as a way to simply explain away why so-and-so is wrong. So we're talking about the inerrancy of the Bible, for instance. Someone might say, well, this person is a white male and so he can't understand. Or the only reason she believes this way is because she grew up in a Western culture. Or, well, he wants this to be true or she's biased against the idea because of childhood abuse, or the scholars are funded by the school and they have to teach what the school wants them to teach, or well, we might go back to the, you know church history and be like, well, these early councils were just a bunch of power-hungry bishops trying to control others. We might talk about our dislike for the institution of the church, whatever it is. But it's like that is the only way people know how to argue now rather than devoting our attention to first order evidence, which bears directly on the issue, people are just assuming one thing or another and then thinking that they have an argument by creating explanations for why the other guys are wrong. There is considerable debate among philosophers how much weight we should give to higher order evidence, but one thing seems quite clear, you cannot rely solely on it. If you do, you're making the ad hominem fallacy, which is a logical fallacy where you dismiss an argument by attacking the person who presents the argument rather than addressing the argument itself. Christians are not off the hook here. We might say something like, oh, people don't become Christian because of childhood father trauma or because they don't want God in control of their lives. That might be true for certain individuals and it's worth exploring. Likewise, Christians should consider how their beliefs are formed by the culture they grew up in. All of that is fine, but even if someone is an atheist because they are biased against God, doesn't mean atheism is false. And even if a Christian believes because she grew up in a Christian household, doesn't mean Christianity is false. 
None of these higher order evidences bear directly on the truth of the matter. They bear on an individual's ability to think about it. For me, yes, I grew up in a wonderful Christian home. I grew up in a church that loved God and loved other peoples. There's a lot in my life that makes my belief in Christianity no surprise. The real question is whether or not Christianity is true. That makes all the difference whether or not I grew up with an advantage or a disadvantage in discovering the truth. Long story short, we've got to get back to first order evidence before we venture out to higher order stuff. Higher order evidence can be helpful for individuals to consider their biases, but it's not a valid argument to simply assume people are wrong and then come up with explanations for why they are wrong. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.